If you or someone you know has diabetes, you may have built up an excess supply of test strips and lancets. That's where we come in. We'll buy the supplies that you don't need and resell them to those in need to prevent waste. Help us make diabetes management more affordable. Visit us at teststripswithaz.com. All right, we have Hannah Goldie joining the program who just got some great news earlier this week. She is signed with the UFC and will take on Miranda Granger in a little over a week at UFC Newark. Welcome to the program and welcome to the UFC, Hannah Goldie. How are you, Hannah? I'm great. Thanks for having me on the show. Absolutely. Congratulations on signing the deal with the UFC. and We'll get into next Saturday in a moment, but walk us through getting the news that you're now a, a member of the UFC roster. Um, it was kind of a surprise, actually, like, um, me and Abe had been working on another deal for a couple weeks and, um, you know, he did his job and he had a conversation with Mick and it was kind of like a last minute thing, but, you know, we ended up wanting to take it. Obviously the UFC is going to take care of me. So we're really excited. Um, funny note, side note about when I got the news, um, I was with Odin and I was like, making fun of him because he's like super funny when he poops and like, <laughs> I was like taking funny videos of him while he was doing it because he always like runs away from me and hides and like the whole time I'm like I'm like on the phone with Abe on the phone with my coaches like going back and forth trying to finalize everything and then like within like you know the 10 minutes that it took for me to like accept the fight Odin had finished pooping and like literally it just like exploded everywhere and like <laughs> He had to be showered and rinsed, and I was like, okay, so, like, God definitely did not want me to forget what I was doing when I got this news. <laughs> it's like it's like when you're walking on the street and a, and a bird poops on you. It could be good luck. You never know. Yeah. Abs- I mean, Odin poop is way luckier than <laughs> Come on. <laughs> my kid used to do the same thing when he when he was wearing a diaper. He used to hide. He didn't want anybody to know he was pooping, but he always knew. So oh, he yeah. probably did the same thing. Well, his thing is he'll just be like, Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, are you pooping? And he's like, no. <laughs> but you know, you know, it's it's happening at, at that at that moment. What other deal were were you and Abe working out? If you don't mind me asking, was it with a different promotion or? Yeah, it was. We were. Um, I I honestly thought that I was kind of one, um, and I was super excited about that too. You know, I, I like for me. I lo- I'm like super grateful to be fighting for the UFC and I'm really excited and I think that you know this is definitely the right path for me um, now that you know this is where it's gone but um, I was never like I need to fight for a certain organization like I just wanted to fight for whoever was going to take care of me and had my best interest and you know like I do this because I love to fight but I also do this because I have a son to support and you know the UFC is going to take care of me so like I said I'm excited to be with them but um, one was on my radar too for sure. Nice, because, you know, you fought Callie Robbins on the Contender Series, and you had a fantastic performance. A lot of people thought you deserved a contract that night. It didn't really happen, but, you know, what's interesting about the Contender Series is, you know, it's not the Ultimate Fighter, but there are some operational similarities. Like, the premise of, of the Ultimate Fighter was get on the show, win the tournament, and earn your way into the UFC. And it evolved over the years where oftentimes if you have a good showing on the show, even if you don't win the whole thing, you could still end up there. And we're seeing that a lot with the Contender Series where fighters may not get a contract that night, but they should still get opportunities sent your way. You know, was that in the back of your mind at at any point? Like, you know, hey, I didn't get a contract, but I had a pretty darn good audition anyways. Yeah, I mean, you know, after the fight, everybody was like, don't hold your head down. You know, I did receive a lot of you know, feedback on, like, people saying that they thought that I deserved a contract, and either way, you know, like, it wasn't up to them, it was up to Dana, and, like, I respect Dana's decision, like, I understand going on that show, like, what he wants, I just wasn't willing to risk um, next month's rent for, you know, a stupid mistake, I know Callie is a tough girl, and I know she's in the fight for the whole fight, so, you know, I did what I had to do to win, and, um, you know, like I said, I didn't, like, hold any resentment towards Dana for saying what he said, like, he said, I need more experience, but man, like I'll be gaining experience till I retire. You know what I mean? Every fight teaches you something new. So, you know, I learned a lot about myself as a fighter in that fight and I had been working on some new things that I really wanted to show. And I think that I did that. So I was happy with my performance and yeah, I I knew that, you know, there was a possibility that I could get a, you know, a short notice fight. Um, I knew I was on the radar. They asked me to come back on the contender in August. It just wasn't something that I was ready to commit to yet until I saw what my other options were. And then, you know, it was a good thing that I waited because then this fight came through. And now you get Miranda Granger next week, who is also undefeated, the CFFC strawweight champion. Did you know much about Miranda when you found out she'd be your opponent? 
Um, I had been offered a fight with her a couple weeks prior, actually, for CFFC. Um, and I didn't really look too much into it, only because I was kind of looking into um, other organizations at the time. So uh, I didn't know too much about her, but I had heard her name pop up a couple times, um, you know, in the earlier stages of my pro career. So, you know, up until a couple days ago, though, I didn't really see much on her. When it comes to these short notice opportunities, probably even more so knowing Miranda is going through the same thing. Is it almost better in a way to, to make your debut like this because you don't have to overthink anything? Like, you just had a fight not too long ago. You could just go in there, be you, and, and just fight. Or would you prefer to have a long camp heading into this? Man, I mean, I think, like, there's, like, pros and cons to both. Like, having a long fight camp, one of the main reasons that we have long fight camps is for the weight cut. So, for me right now, like, this fight's at 125. And, uh, you know, 125, is, it's not a tough weight cut for me. I don't need more than a couple weeks to make that weight. So, you know, um, for me, like, as a professional athlete, I stay in shape all the time. Like, I'm training all the time. I'm sharpening my tools all the time. Um, I'm ready to fight anybody at any time. So, yeah, obviously, you know, you want to check out your opponent and see and game plan a little bit. But you could game plan for nine weeks, and then everything that you game planned could not happen at all in the fight. So it's like, do you really need more than a couple weeks to get ready for a fight if you're staying in shape like you should be? Like, if this is your job, if you're a professional athlete, you should stay in shape all the time and be ready all the time so you're ready for stuff like this. Um, so, yeah, you know, like, I'm excited. I was ready to fight the day after my last fight. So, you know, <laughs> I'm like, what took so long? <laughs> <laughs> is it safe to say you're very, you're, you're cool with not having to cut those additional 10 pounds for this fight? Man, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'm cool with <laughs> I, I don't discriminate against any kind of food, so if I could eat, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with this fight being 125 pounds, you've fought in this weight class a few times in your career, even though your last fight was at 115 on the Contender Series. Miranda has always fought at 115. She has not fought at 125 as a professional fighter. Do you see that as an advantage, having that experience flying in, fighting in that, in that division? Um, I mean, I guess we're going to find out next Saturday, but you know, like I've, I've been comfortable at both weight classes. I have, I'm a big 115er, so, you know, like I've really had to dial in my weight cut and, um, figure out how to make 115 healthy and feel good the next day. 125 is, you know, I, I'm, like I said, it's not a hard weight cut for me, but I also feel like I'm still strong enough for that weight class. So, um, I do feel like it's an advantage for me, but you know, I'm, I don't know what she walks around at. I don't really, I, I don't really know how big she is as a person. So, I mean, she could feel great too. I'm not really worried about her though. I mean, I know I'm going to feel good and I know I'm ready to put on a show. So, so as we talked about, and as everyone saw in the contender series, you are a mom, you fought six months or so after you had your son. And it's interesting because I have fighters on all the time who are parents. Most of them are dads. Um, and the moms that I've had have, you know, been moms for like 12 or 13 years. So they've already had that you know, that, that feeling of having a baby and having a little kid and, and all of those things. But, you know, I ask fighters all the time, like how much they've changed as a parent. And, you know, I'm a parent myself, so I completely understand the motivation that could bring to anything being a parent. So how has becoming a parent changed the way you view yourself as a fighter and as a professional athlete? I mean, you know, before I had Odin, everything was about me, you know, like I was fighting for myself and, I, I put a lot of pressure on myself before I had Odin, honestly, and I think that since I had him, some of that pressure, I kind of took some of that pressure off myself um, in a good way, you know, like my mental game has gotten so much stronger because like I have something to fight for that's bigger than me, you know what I mean? Like I'm fighting for my kid, I'm fighting to take care of my kid, and like, you know, I just feel like, like this is God's plan for me, and like everything in my life happened for a reason, um, Honestly, like Odin wasn't planned, you know what I mean? Like I wasn't, I was actually in fight camp when I found out that I was pregnant with him. And, you know, he obviously is the biggest blessing of my life and he completely turned my life around. He made me a better person. I think he made me a better athlete. He made me a better fighter. Um, he gave me something to fight for. So, uh, you know, it's just, it's been, it's been amazing. Like having him by my side through all of this and yeah, fighting six months after I had him, like that was crazy. Like when I was pregnant, like straight up the first, like when I found out I was pregnant, I was like, I'm going to fight six months after I have him. And all of my friends are like, um, okay, like that's a good goal, but like, don't get set on it or anything. And I'm like, I'm set on it. Like I'm fighting. And like, I remember like talking to Dean to him, like, 
Dean, like this card, I'm like, you're having card in January, I'm fighting on that card. And like, I did, you know, and that was literally the best feeling in the entire world, like setting my mind to something, doing it, and then literally like seeing Odin in the ring with me after I won was amazing. Um, and I just wanted to keep showing him that his mom was strong and, you know, could do anything that she set her mind to. It's so cool when they're babies because they're like so tiny and cute and you never sleep, but you still like realize how cute they are. But, you know, it's so much they cooler. You, as... they tell you to, yeah, they tell you to sleep when they sleep, but all you can do is like watch them sleep. Right. <laughs> I watched a lot of Cheers when, when my son was a baby because he never slept ever. But, you know, it's so much cooler when they get bigger because you can have conversations with them. They become like li like little people. Like how have you been enjoying your watching your son grow and evolve? I mean, it's crazy. Him, Like, he's my best friend, man. You know, like, he does everything with me. Like, he trains with me. He chills with me. We, you know, we have dance parties together. We play together. Like, I mean, and it's just really cool to think that, like, Alex and I made him. You know what I mean? Like, that is just the coolest thing. Sometimes I still look at him and I'm like, that's my kid. Like, that's crazy, you know? And I mean, I may be biased. I obviously think he's like the smartest, best kid in the entire world. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's just been nuts. And, you know, he teaches me more and more about life every single day. And he has just shown me what's important and, um, you know, how valuable my time is now. Um, I don't have a lot of it, you know what I mean? Like all my time goes to training or him and you know, if there's a little bit extra, like, I'm seriously careful about how I spend it now because I know how valuable that time is. Will he be there during fight week and in, in, at the Pru on Saturday? He will probably not come to this one. Um, it's been since Alex and I split up, it's kind of been working out better with one of us keeping him while, while the other one fights. It's crazy because, like, we both fought back to back. Like, our last couple fights, uh, he fought right before me and then I literally like he fought and then I fought the next week and it's the same thing this time like I'm fighting and then he's fighting the next week so it just kind of works out that we um like take turns that way uh and his family and my family help us out a lot with that so it works I do love having him there but at the same time it's it's a lot um especially you know doing it by yourself so yeah, especially you'll be doing media days and weigh-ins and all those things, whatever's going to be happening at the Peru. So there's going to be a lot going on. And I don't know if you're a fighter who makes predictions or anything like that. And if you aren't, that's totally cool. But, you know, when you visualize this fight playing out, how do you see it playing out at the Peru next weekend? Man, I see it. I, I just see it wherever the fight goes. I think that I'm going to be better. I think that I'm going to be stronger. I think I'm going to be faster. I think I'm going to be more explosive. Um, I don't think she's ever fought anybody like me before um and i think that i am a more difficult fighter to figure out how to fight in two weeks than she is and i think that that's gonna show but is, i mean i i see if i want to keep it standing i'm gonna keep it standing if i want to take her down i'm gonna take her down uh if i want to beat her up on the ground i'll beat her up on the ground it just whatever whatever i see i'm gonna take i'm ready wherever the fight goes is it kind of wild that your debut fight is in Newark? Because I was watching your interview with James Lynch, and when he asked you how you got into the sport, you told the story about how you went to an underground fighting event in New York with your dad to watch fights. And fast forward, you're making your de UFC debut not too far from there. Have you thought about that at all? Is it kind of weird? Yeah, so I grew up in Vermont, um, and I lived in the city. So, like, I don't know if you know anything about up north, but, like, everything's like pretty close together so like when I say I'm fighting in New Jersey all of my hometown is like you're fighting in Jersey we're coming like that's awesome so it is really really cool and it, it ended up working out well because my mom who lives with me down here she uh is visiting some family up there so she's just gonna come straight from there and she's bringing my sister and my brother's coming so it's it's cool I'm excited to fight you know in front of my home home crew kind of where where in Vermont were you from Stratton I, I live in the Berkshires, so I'm not that far from there. I could probably drive oh, yeah. there in a few hours, as, as a matter yeah. of fact. It's crazy. Uh, but we're I, miss it. I totally took it for granted growing up there. Now I'm like, that's like my vacation. I'm like, I want to go get away from it. <laughs> <laughs> you want to get that maple cotton candy and all that great yes. stuff they have up there. It's phenomenal. I love it Absolutely. in Vermont. 
Well, we certainly look forward to next Saturday as Hannah Goldie takes on Miranda Granger next Saturday afternoon. Early start time for this one, as I believe the first fight is at noon on August 3rd. How about that? <laughs> Hannah, thank you for the time. Before we let you go, let the folks know where they can follow along with you on this journey via social media. Any shout-outs, anything else you want to get off your chest, the floor is yours. Yeah, um, at Hannah Goldie on Instagram, Hannah Goldie on Facebook. Uh, you know, I just want to say thank you to my team, um, Jason Carapucci, Mitchell Chamali, Hank Porter, uh, Julian Williams, Pete Zachary at Fusion, um, and then everybody that's reached out to me, you know, over the past couple weeks, you know, since my contender fight, I've gotten a lot of love, and I just, you know, want everybody to know that I've been reading all your messages, and even if I don't have a chance to respond, um, just know that I do love, you know, getting these messages and hearing people's stories and you know you guys inspire me just as much as you say i'm inspiring you so uh keep them coming and hopefully at some point i can you know get back to everyone <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah but thank you thank you hannah i appreciate the time very much all the best to you next week and during fight weekend on the fight on saturday thank you